Hello, I'm Barry Burke, Chief Strategy Officer for EMC's Enterprise Storage Division. In today's session, I'd like to talk to you about two other components of our overall enterprise storage strategy, Federation and Active, active Data Access with VPlex. Now, at the surface, they're only loosely related, but perhaps at the end of this 10 minutes, you, you might see the connection. Federation, as I've kind of described in the earlier sessions, is about tearing down the walls between our storage arrays. It's a very real recognition that the biggest challenge our large customers suffer is the migration and tech refresh of hardware as, they, as it matures. Um, and with Federation, we really are trying to address this, this migration challenge. Uh, historically, migrations have required you to take applications offline while you move data from one array to the other. And quite frankly, in today's world, that kind of downtime is no longer accessible. There, there is no weekend or night time uh, in a 24 by 7 global operation. So we're trying to design into our products through the, through the, under the umbrella of federation, automation that allows our arrays to cooperatively work together to seamlessly and transparently allow you to take workloads, LUNs, volumes, devices, and relocate them from one array to the another seamlessly and without impacting the application. And to leverage the compute power and the I.O. power of the storage arrays to do that without impacting performance during, the, during or prior to or during the relocation. To truly make the arrays themselves seamless. Now this is a key, as I said, key challenge our customers had. If you, if you look back just 10 years ago when I started here at EMC, the average symmetrics array that left the factory had between 6 and 10 terabytes of storage. 6 and 10. Now today that's almost a joke because you can get a 2 terabyte disk drive. Today's average, we see systems leaving the factory with 100, 120 terabytes on average. And our arrays support well in excess of 2 petabytes as a usable capacity. And I just happened to the other day pull a, pull a, pull a report. The top 10 arrays that we have shipped all have more than 831 terabytes of usable capacity in them. Not even raw, I mean usable capacity. So big is big. Uh, and what you thought about 10 years ago when you had to move six terabytes of data, now you're having to move 100, 200, 300 times that amount of data just to get one array out. The amount of time it takes just to do the copy is getting to be you know, a disruption in itself. So the very notion of building automation and federation to allow our arrays to seamlessly move information from one to another without disrupting the application is key to our overall strategy. And today we do that with uh, Symmetrics with a product we call Federated Live Migration. But the ultimate roadmap for FLM or, or Federation is to go beyond just tech refresh and to ultimately pre present a pool of Symmetric storage arrays as being a pool of capacity. Not only to have pools within the array, but to have pools that actually span across multiple arrays without sacrificing availability, performance, or scale. And this kind of a real recognition is that we're never going to build an array that's large enough to handle everybody's environment. There's not going to be the one array, the one giant box that does everything. And so instead, we have to make a lot of boxes work as if they are one. And I think maybe we're the first vendor to practically deliver a working solution with that, with, uh, with FLM. And we have a lot of materials about how FLM works, but the key driving factor behind it is why recognizing that the, the walls and barriers between our storage arrays and our platforms today have really got to be melted away so that we can seamlessly re relocate our workloads within, within the data center across different technologies. Which brings me to VPlex. Because VPlex, when it was first introduced, and as it's been seen by most in the early days, fit into a segment of the market called storage virtualization. And people would say that storage virtualization, one of the primary use cases for storage virtualization, has been to simplify migrations. And a lot of the initial deployments of competitive products in this space, whether that be the, uh, the IBM SVC, for example, or, or Hitachi's UVM, Universal Volume Manager, the deployments of those typically have been, first and foremost, to simplify migrations. Tuck this storage in this environment, then you can move things seamlessly from one to another. And in fact, you can do that today with VPlex. In fact, one of our largest customers, a reference customer, is AOL, and they use VPlex exclusively for that use case. They literally replace one or two storage arrays a week, and they, can, they took the time it takes to migrate off a storage array down from six months to less than 14 days. 
and they have those migrations being operated, driven by VPlex live while customers are doing I.O., transparently in the background, and basically you start on a Monday, and two Mondays later you roll the old array out, and you roll another one in. And it's very, very simple, and it's a clockwork process for them. But that's storage virtualization. What VPlex does is so much more than storage virtualization. And the reason why we've invested in this technology and we're so excited about it is that it enables us to do something that nobody, no other product that I've seen yet on the market can do. And that is at its core, VPlex is a distributed caching appliance. And by a distributed caching appliance, I mean it is able to present a view of a storage device or storage capacity, a LUN, a device, or whatever it may be, in multiple locations and to allow concurrent I.O. at multiple locations to the exact same data. It literally can make a volume look as if it is local in, in more than one place. Today the product, is, by the way, as it ships, supports two locations in either sync or async distances, but the architecture and design is a distributed cache appliance that could literally make an application or present the data in as many as 64, 128, 256 locations, simultaneous access around the world. Now, as I've said before, there are not a lot of applications designed that can take advantage of this. The primary use cases that we're finding today fall into two kind of categories. First, we're, doing, we're selling a lot of VPlex as active-active solutions for high availability, whether it be high availability with VMware or high availability, for example, with Oracle Rack. And the idea, the notion is, is that VPlex can present the volume in multiple locations uh, with concurrent access governed by a higher level of software, VMware in one case or Oracle Rack in the other, but it can present the data in a far more efficient manner and, and requires less bandwidth than either of those products can do on their own. So when we first announced VPlex at EMC World of 2010, we demonstrated moving a thousand applications a thousand kilometers, or maybe it was 26 applications 26 kilometers. But we demonstrated using basically VMware, I mean, I'm sorry, VPlex automation to move the data and to accelerate the vMotion of applications from one, one location to another by 27 times. That is, able to get an application started in another location in a tiny fraction of the amount of time it would take if you used your native tools with, uh, with VMware vMotion as an example. In this year, we've demonstrated being able to move applications at this year's EMC World over 1,000 kilometers. In fact, VPlex today has been uh, is certified to operate at 50 milliseconds, which is just about halfway around the world if you go fast enough, if you go the right way, take a shortcut through, uh, through the middle of the earth at one point. Um, but the idea being is that it can actually present the data active, active in two locations, even when it doesn't have all the data at both locations. It is very unique in its caching algorithms, understanding where data is being modified, um, and understanding the, the need and being able to present the latest copy of the data, irrespective of the fact that there may be distance between uh, the two copies. So, like I said, this is a new technology. It's enabling new things, and we're seeing new applications being built around it. Now, it's an interesting thing is that at the core of VPlex is that it is basically, in one sense, a form of federation, and in another sense, it's a form of automation, of fast, in fact. Uh, in its asynchronous model, VPlex Active Active pulls over data on demand to the remote site based on what the application needs. If you think about it for a moment, it's very much doing the same thing that, that, same thing that FAST is doing when it promotes data to higher tiers. Identifying that data that's needed by the application, the data that's being accessed, promote that to a higher tier, and all the rest of the data let it settle down to the lower end of the, lower end of the tiering within the array. I kind of like to joke that VPlex is FAST sideways. It kind of looks at the data and it pulls over the data across the wire, the painful, you know, the the overhead of moving the data across the wire, but moving only the data that's needed at the other end. And if you have a 40 terabyte Oracle database that has one terabyte of data in it and your application is only accessing 5% of that, we only need to move 5% of a terabyte across the wire. And the rest of the data can stay on the other side. VPlex is unique in, it, in being able to do that. Every other technology that you look at, everything else on the planet so far that you've seen commercially delivered actually requires the 40 terabytes to be moved to the other location before you can access the data. That's what makes VPlex unique, and that's why it's a key part of our overall virtual storage strategy. Being able to automate the movement of data across tiers inside of an array to optimize cost, 
being able to seamlessly migrate across multiple arrays within a data center, and being able to move data on demand and move only that data that you need across long wide area communications, three key components to basically enable this as a service or, com or, or cloud computing model. And we could even look forward to days when VPLEX is an enabling technology that allows you to pick up running applications and move them into the cloud. For, for example, cloud bursting. When you need more compute power at the end of the quarter, go move a bunch of your applications up to a service provider. VPLEX could seamlessly move the necessary parts of the data to that environment, allow you to get those applications running there with a minimum of application downtime, and delivering a solution that you've never even been able to imagine prior to its, prior to its introduction. So that's why VPLEX is a key part and why I think it's related to federation in that it's both about tearing down the walls. One in case of federation in the data center, tearing down the walls that actually make up our physical storage arrays, and with VPLEX, tearing that wall, that, that, that wall down that is the speed of light, the, the barrier, by reducing the amount of data and focusing only on moving the data that is most critical or required by the application to the remote site. So that's kind of why, why that is important to our overall strategy. So that kind of summarizes fast federation and VPLEX. Um, what I'd like to do uh, in another session coming up is to talk a little bit more about how all these things kind of come together to provide an integrated solution um, and why it's really a compelling vision for, for, for us and for our customers.